Welcome to one of the greatest American art forms, the mixtape. Traditionally, a mixtape is a homemade compilation of media from multiple sources recorded into a medium like a CD, VHS, or cassette tape. What I present here is one part of what I call mixtape therapy, a collection of authentic conversations, usually involving multiple people, compiled into a podcast. Just as you might share a mixtape, I share these conversations with you, hoping that you will share them with others and they connect us in a similar way. Now, join me for a little mixtape therapy. Then, what I'd like to do um, before, you know, it's somebody's bedtime, is um, do a little bit mixtape therapy with all of us. Are you are you down? Yeah, I'm down. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna come get on camera. I'm gonna switch places with you. Oh. All right, so we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, mixtape therapy, and essentially what this is is I'm using a, a game called uh, Unpack That, um, and it's therapy in a box. And so what we'll do is I'm just going to, we're going to do three questions. Each one of us will answer uh, first. Y'all can decide who kind of goes first, but we got to pick a subject. So um, the subjects are tough questions, the bad, the good, reflection, and wild card. And Joey, since you're the guest, you can pick the first subject. What would you, where would you like to start? I'm going wild card. Uh, I don't even know what wild card is. I never really use it. Um, oh, I'm just going to start. This is great. Okay, mm -hmm. you ready? Does that mean I'm answering first? Good day? luck with this. All right. Yeah. Well, you answer first, but like in this case, it's it's okay for you. Um, well, no, I don't know. Okay. Create your own question that you want to ask us. Oh. Oh. What would you like to know? All right. If I die tomorrow, what is the best memory that you have of me? Oh. I, I already told him. I already told you mine. I'll try to come up. Uh, I've, I've already talked about mine. I'll come up with another one now. Oh, I know. Oh, I know, but wow, that one's like, nah, that's not a good, like, oh. Scott's like running like four different ideas right now. I know. I'm, well, I'm just, because they're like, they're running through my head, like rapidly. I'm mm -hmm. like. <laughs> and so happens when you spend that much time with somebody. Oh, for me, like, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, that's kind of putting, putting somebody on the spot. Because you like, always, best... well, and I'll, I'll preface it by saying, it's like, you know, you always wonder what people say about you when you're not in the room. You know, oh, you always yeah. worried about, you know. What is going to be your legacy when you're gone? And so to ask a fair question to two of my college buddies, you know, what is it, you know, what is that memory that would you hang on to the most? Um, probably one of my greatest memories is being in college and going to a college party at Denny's house and then convincing a police officer that you were 15 years old. That was, that's... Like to think that like <laughs> to think that we were going to go to a police officer and tell him or her that my brother, which was he was like 16. Mm -hmm. Right. And that my roommate in college was also 15. Had a baby face. And, and that like I had to get them home was the greatest lie I've ever told in my entire life. I'm not sure why you'd even have to tell those lies. Because well, they were getting caught. No, I, I, I get it. It was very irresponsible of my roommates to put y'all into that situation. I'll just oh, say that. I mean, like that wasn't even the point of the story. Dude. The point of the story is, is that I probably should have a better memory than like talking him at getting him out of a ticket. But like that is, you know, I mean, we just had so many. It, it was like it was, you know, like when we were on the podcast, Joey talked about like that he was kind of the middle brother between me and my brother. And then when Josh got there, it was kind of like we were all kind of and we're just like constantly like fucking with each other. We lived up and downstairs from each other. We were always in each other's apartments like, you know, and that was like kind of that was after college for me, at least. Right. Yeah, I was and, finishing up. You're finishing up. And so, like, you know, we just spent a lot of time together and, you know, and. <laughs> But to a lot of time but, with Tyson. And also the reason why you helped me out with that was that rewind like two months prior, like the first day of school, uh, Jody Allen was having a party and Scott's like, Hey, why don't you come meet some of the fraternity guys? So I was pulling out of uh, Jackson hall, driving to Jody's, which wasn't that far. And I did a no, no left turn. I get pulled over by a, a university PD. They run my license and they said it's suspended. So my first day of college, I got thrown in jail and missed all my first day of classes. 
No way. Yeah. Why did you have a suspended license? Um, before that, I got a minor in possession. Uh, in Victoria, we went to like Hallettsville or Schrader to go to a dance on the of way back. Course. The guy that was driving was drunk and we all had beer in the car. So he got a DWI and we all got MIPs. You had to pay $250. You had to do eight hours community service. I had to do two AA classes. Did Felton get y'all that fucking? I don't know. Uh, and then the last part of it was you lose your license for a month. And the negotiation was that when I made my payment, they would suspend it the first, uh, the full week of October. Whatever reason, they messed up and they suspended my license in August. And so I was driving around for a few weeks already without a, without a license. I didn't know it. So mm. when I get pulled over, they run it. Error. So Joey didn't didn't pass go. And so I think Scott was kind of helping me because I was already in jail once. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In full disclosure. Yeah. I don't know. For, for me, some of the best times I had with Joey were, you know, us in the living room. Uh, playing, you know, as you said, Mario Party earlier, like it was, you know, it was, it felt like family. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It mm -hmm. felt like we were just this, it wasn't, I mean, it was fraternity brother, which was kind of a family, but it was more like it felt like really like family because we were saying from the same hometown. We, you know, I could, I felt like I, I could trust you guys and that meant a lot to me, mm -hmm. right? And then ob obviously the the uh, third eye blind. No, oh, yeah. yeah, third eye blind song. I every time I hear that song, it's like I know. I think of you too. Flying yeah. the solo. What what song? How's um, it gonna be? What's it gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that I told I told my daughter about that too. You know, because her music. Like your dad can hit yeah. that high note. That's about all he can hit. But who no, hit it? I can. Yeah, I can do some R. Kelly too. You want to see? You want to hear? I believe no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> you uh okay, you 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 you're trying to create a question. What do you what kind of questions do you have for me and uh Oh for Wild? No, for us. Like you no, like no, am I doing the same thing? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say, yeah, we're all gonna go, we're gonna do a couple of these. So oh, okay, yeah. Question. Okay. But we're all gonna answer the same question. So in this scenario, Joey asked a question and now you're asking a question. Yeah, you go first. You it, go. It, it, think well, about the, it. it just said it. uh create your own question. Create there wasn't much to it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you go first. All right. Uh, Joey, what is your biggest regret about our relationship? And regret not being like necessarily a negative thing, but regret yeah. being like, oh, man, I just wish I would have done more of that because like now and retrospectively, I understand how important that is. I wish that I would have spent more time, you know, with, with you guys, right? You, you, your, your currency is time. My, you can Absolutely. you can spend money, you can do this, but you cannot get time back. You can make money, you can get you know replacements for whatever you need, but you can't get back time. So that currency I always value, and anything I do is time. And so I always, you know, when you kind of look back and retrospectively, like, what do I wish I would have done better with my brother or you know with my with my spouse with my kids? It's always comes to time. And then you look at it, it's like the things that I did instead of spending time with my friends. You know, I kind of wish I would have done more with you guys, right? You know, because get you get girlfriends or you start working and then you're like, man, I just got to make money so I can make sure I pay the bills and, and have enough. So I, I look back and I wish I would have spent more time with you guys. Nah, that's, that's a great answer, yeah. What about you, Dan? What, do you have any regrets about our relationship? <clears throat> you know, I think after I stopped living with you guys, I kind of fell off with you know, hanging out as much. And and there was no animosity, I don't believe, but I, I felt like I should have fostered that relationship a little bit more. Um, and that part of that, a lot of that's just me. I was, I was struggling and just doing stupid shit. And, and so I, you know, I, I felt like, I, I understand this now, like as part of my job is to keep up with people that, that are meaningful in your life and, and, and have contributed to your success and who you are. And I felt like after we stopped living together, that kind of just, I kind of lost touch of that. And, 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 and I, and I think until recently you and I, Scott, right. When I moved back here, even I was kind of a little bit of fool of myself. I, and I was a lot full of myself, you know, coming from Dallas, like, 
had that Dallas attitude that people from Dallas had. You know, <laughs> those fucking guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and they we add they absolutely do. And and then same same for you, Joey. Like we I, I don't know if we grew apart. It's part is me not not making the effort because that's what it's about effort. Yeah. You know. And I think I think out of sight, out of mind, and that's kind of where we're at these these days too. It's like we get so wrapped up in what's in front of us that we we miss out on these these personal relationships that that we've already invested so much time in and are meaningful and true. And why don't we just continue to invest in those? It may take a little more effort, but why don't we just do that? And and so I regret that, you know, not not investing that time. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> the only thing that gives you really perspective is time. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, it's real easy to say about all the regrets of what you would do. I, f- I feel kind of the same. It's like, you know, like we have all these ways to connect with each other. And I could have stayed connected or more connected to you guys. Or even in the fact of like, you know, while Joey has been, you know, just trying to kill his career. I could have just been just more diligent about bother, not bothering him, but just reaching out to him, knowing that like he's not going to reach out as much back. But that's important to maintain our relationship at that time until he gets to a space where he can reach back. And sometimes we get upset. It's like, well, man, that dude never texts me back. And that person never texts me back. And so we like, well, fuck that person. Well, yeah. maybe that person needs a little bit more from you at that moment. And so, you know, I don't necessarily regret because it is what I, what I did, but I, I wish that I just would have made more effort, like you said, on my end to do my part to nurture our relationship, even if um, I wasn't getting necessarily the same in return. It's not about that. It's about like how I show up, you know? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So after thinking about it, my question would be, instead of looking back, looking forward, what's something before you leave this earth that you hope to accomplish? You want to go first on this one? What do I want to accomplish when I get off? Yeah, this like earth? what's one goal that you, what's something that you you want to put your stamp on and say I did that before you before you leave the earth? It's really weird because I think that you can have this goal of making this big impression on all these people, but it's more realistic to go well. What's the impression I can make on every individual that I come in contact with? And that becomes the, the the giant legacy that I leave, that everyone that I came in contact with had a positive experience with me because the goal of like, hey, I'm going to change this about the world is so big that one person really can't do that. But, you know, who can do that? A bunch of people that are focused, believing the same types of things. To your point, it's almost like that that leader mentality. You know, if how can I make someone one percent better? Because that's what uh, what a what a leader does mm-hmm. is give the tools to the team to accomplish the goals that they need to accomplish. That's what a leader does. Yeah. That's leading. Yeah. Right. People get confused that leading is like I tell you what to do. No, that's management. No, it's management. That's but, yeah, but, but you yeah. know what's so crazy yeah. is is that the, yeah. the, like so um, y'all guys kind of work in that you know branch of like business, yeah. right? And that. It's still an accepted model. They do that everywhere. And we all we read all the books about like how to really lead and how to be a manager. But like it's not like it's very I'm sure maybe y'all have had managers that have applied those skills. But then you probably have also had managers or people that don't apply it at all. And they're in a position of leadership and they're like messing stuff up. You know what I mean? And it's like, are we not all reading the same books? Like, I mean, but, you know, it's like. It's like the difference between traditional strength training and then trying to flip your mind over to like, okay, I need to train differently because my body is getting older. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of a new philosophy of the way things should be done and then, and then moving over to that. Yeah, I think a leader, if you're a true leader of people, of men, you're there to help remove roadblocks from them being successful. And then that's the thing is you want to have the people underneath you be successful because it helps you. Ultimately, if we're talking about business, helps you be successful. That's what Kyle think, Shanahan does with Brock Purdy. He just moves, removes the roadblocks. Yeah, removes the roadblocks. Love and be successful. Yeah, if we're talking about <laughs> sports, yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of, if we're talking about Brock Purdy and Kyle <laughs> Shanahan, a lot of what what that has to do is like, he Brock Purdy has the raw materials, the 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 intangibles that you don't get from a lot of quarterbacks 
that he can read things a lot faster than other people, right? And Kyle Shanahan is just putting a playbook together. And those mixed together will help him remove the roadblocks in front of him. So well, I don't think Kyle, you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong with your statements. Well, though. I think Kyle Shanahan is the quarterback whisperer. That's what I think. Well, some say he has a system. Well, and, it, call, and, it, call, and, it's it irre- what, and it's irrelevant who you hey, have look, as a quarterback. Call, call, it, call it what you want to, but quarterbacks that play in his system play really well. Is that fair? Some do. I would say. Who didn't? Um, Trey Lance? I mean, I don't, his sample. Well, tr- tr- his sample size is too small. He's very small, but yeah. I mean, you could look at. Um, I mean, he had a bunch of quarterbacks underneath him, like especially when Jimmy. Yeah, G- but Jimmy I can G name a hurt. bunch of quarterbacks he had underneath him that played fantastic. Uh, Matt played Ryan, good. Matt Ryan won an MVP, motherfucker. Like Matt Ryan, <laughs> and should have won. A Super Bowl. And then, hey, and then you know what happened to Matt Ryan after that? He sucked balls. Yeah, he sucked. Yeah, he wasn't. He was mad. He melted ice. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, to me, so I was thinking about it. I think, you know, it, two things. One, it's like. I want my kids to find their passion and be successful, whatever that may be. So that's, you know, for, for my family. And then my other piece is, you know, I, I love doing runs. I love doing endurance runs. Like I want to challenge myself at some point to do like one of those crazy ultras where it's like a, the Moab or the Sahara. You know what? I mean, that's just, that's something Good that I love you, doing man. I, and I, I want to do it, but it, it takes a lot of training. Like I, you know, the longest distance I've done at this point is 50 miles and the training for that. I was like an ass to my family for like three months yeah, yeah. because of my routine that I had to train just to build up to run 50 miles. Yeah. So at some point I want to be able to do that, but you know, depending on trying to be a husband, trying to be a dad, you know, right now supersedes that passion. So at some point when my kids get a little bit older, then maybe I can start looking into that. Yeah. And hopefully my body will hold up by then. I don't know. Oh yeah. I'm like, you're speaking as a young man right now, because let me (laughs) tell you something. If it was me, I'd get on that shit right now because it's your body. That's going to, it's your body's going to leave you first. Like fuck your mind. Like you'll figure it out. Like you better, your body's gonna be like, nah, I can't do this. (laughs) David Goggins. I mean, that, I mean, he was, that guy's crazy. though. That guy's crazy. But he's he's running on knees that, that any other person would be like, yeah, look, peace out. That's that's look. I, I I people get upset about David Goggins like that he's too extreme or whatever. That's what that guy needs to be on. That's like that's that's his dopamine. That's he how he. That challenge. That's his he cha- that the way challenge, he challenges yeah. himself. Your challenges can be less than that and still be quote unquote as challenging. You don't have to be like all crazy about it. You know what I mean? All right, so wait, who picked? You picked wild card? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, Denny, uh, reflections, tough questions, the good or the bad? Tough questions. Oh. I mean, we can we can start with any of these, I guess. <laughs> so it's a roulette game over here with Scott. Yes, sir. Okay. So Denny pick. Denny goes first. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, so wait, so uh, Denny picked, right? So you go first. I go first. Yeah. Okay, so that means that you're gonna answer this question first, right? Okay. Okay. And you're gonna answer to me and Joey first, and then we answer about you. Okay. Okay. What is something about me that makes you uncomfortable? Something about you that makes me uncomfortable. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, like, like if we're it, it, like when we're driving to Dallas, for instance, mm-hmm. like it's almost like you want to have a therapy session with me. <laughs> that you want to have a therapy session with me, and I just want to talk. You know, I just want to like bullshit. Hey, what? Hey, one hundred percent fair yeah. evaluation. But yeah. let me, let me, let me. Can I, can I defend? No, no. no. Let, let him finish. Our no, okay. Okay. No, no, I think we're. I think. I think that that about sums it up. It's like, and, and I, I wouldn't say that. I'm all. I always feel that way. I say, sometimes I just want to chill, listen to music or talk about nonsense, and not have a therapy session. But then sometimes I think it's very helpful and you provide insight because I, I don't like opening up to just anybody. 
it's it's a defense mechanism. It's something like I don't talk about a lot of my personal feelings. And so sometimes it's good, but then sometimes I'm like, eh, I don't know, may not be the best time. Right. And I think he senses that sometimes, but again, sometimes I just want to hang out and chill, mm-hmm. you know? So go ahead. All I want to say is, is I'm very aware of this. Like this is like, this is a totally fair evaluation. Yeah. The, the problem is, is that like, trust me, as much as you don't want to have a therapy session, I don't want to have one either, really, right? Yeah. But like, when someone starts talking to me, they start to start telling me stuff. And I don't know what to do besides ask questions about like, I'm like, well, cause like, I mean, how does that make you feel? No, no, but, no, 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 yeah, yeah. But like, I just kind of, I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? You know I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm curious. Like, as you know, a, as and so male. then it becomes therapy and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not trying to do, but like, I, sometimes I don't know. I don't want to say know how to turn it off. But I don't even realize it's happening. I'm just kind of yeah. like, hey, like I'm just curious about why you do blank or whatever. As a male, you're trying to, you almost like you're trying to problem solve because that's what we do as males, right? We try to problem solve, and so. But but, but it's more of like I I want like if you come to me with a problem, yeah. It, f- quite frankly, I don't give a fuck what your problem is. That's not that's your problem, right? But like. If you want to actually solve it, well, let's 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 come up with a creative solution. Let's let's come work together to come to a solution, and solve it, or at least like, an alternative or, perspective, right? Yeah. Or yeah. do you just want to kind of bitch about it? Yeah. Because if you just want to bitch about it, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. But like, don't. I mean, don't bitch about it too long. I mean, like, I get it. Okay, it sucks. But like, like, so now what? You know what like I mean? We like, talking about the sports thing earlier, like, because I brought it up several times, without a doubt, and like, you know, you gave me. A, on it. Like, does it matter that much to you? Like, well, I was just kind of yeah. because I've had this conversation with myself yeah, yeah. about sports yeah, yeah. and how much the sports matters. Yeah, right. I got like, or I did. I had like three hundred jerseys with other men's names on the back of them that I would wear around, and I kind of thought processed that, and I was like, man, that's kind of weird. You know what I mean? That I'm walking around with all these other men's names on my back. Gay. <laughs> Super gay. Super duper gay. Hey, it's okay, but uh, look. But all look. All I'm gonna say is, is that then I started processing like, well, how how important is sports? Like, how really important is sports compared to the other things that I want to do in my life? Yeah. Right. So, like as an example, when my favorite team plays in the playoffs, I'm gonna make time for it. In the regular season, like. I'm going to try to work it around like my schedule of like working out so I can maybe watch at the gym or like, you know, but if it doesn't work out, I don't like lose any sleep over it. But you watch every game, right? Me? Yeah. Every football game, not every baseball game. No, 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 but every football game. And like, I, I, absolutely. And I, yeah. Well, look, and, and then given the choice of like, my daughter goes, hey, daddy, I want to play and watch a football game. I pick her every time. That's without a doubt, right? So, but you're not in that stage, really. So they, it's a it's a whole different dynamic. But like, it just it's made me evaluate sports, especially you know, like I don't know, like I might be the only person in my house that really likes sports. I mean, the, the, I mean, so it might just be my thing I do with my friends. And so it's like, well, how much value do I put on that? Which is funny because I would trade that now watching my team play to hang out more with my kids. Well, but you know, isn't that awesome? Like how it flips like that. And what we talked about earlier, you know, concept yeah. of time. You know, time yeah. is a commodity. Yeah, absolutely. And well, don't and get me wrong, my, we we hang out. Our my kids, but it's different than it was. Want, they want to hang out with me on on their terms. On their terms, but would they choose to hang out with me <laughs> if if my daughter didn't get to hang out with her little best friend or a boyfriend or? My son didn't get to hang out on online except, with his little Minecraft runner, friends. A runner up badge yeah. and just own it. Yeah, just own it. Yeah, but the, but but I don't have to be their best. Also, friend. Well, but no, but look, also, like I'm starting now, so y'all have this perspective now. I have this perspective now, but my kids only three. Y'all kids are grown and y'all, yeah. y'all already pretty grown. You know what I mean? And so, if you had had kids late, 
you might have this perspective of time and like how important football actually is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just for me right now, it's just like, yeah, like every football season when it's over, I was like, fuck, man, I didn't watch enough football. I really want to watch football. And then I'm like, okay, next season, I'm going to watch more football because I really enjoy it. Um, and I didn't watch enough last year. And then I keep doing the same thing over and over again. And then I go like, is it really important? Well, it is. It's fun. But like, you know, at least right now, she's more important. She She's important to me. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. All right, what's the question again? Um, okay, so now I'm supposed to tell y'all, or wait, you, or you're going to tell Joey uh, what makes you uncomfortable. Uh, what about him makes you uncomfortable? About Joey? That, I mean, I'd have to speak. I mean, we've hung out very little, mm -hmm. right, since we were younger, right? Um, He's still mad about you not doing, like, dishes and shit or something. You know, me or Denny? I don't know. I was <laughs> Hey, you got any problems with me or Denny? We I got a whole lot of problems, both of y'all. Okay, great. I would, would the thing that the thing that I, I said that would make me uncomfortable about Joey is that he would show everybody pictures of my nuts that he took or somebody <laughs> took on his disposable cameras. I'm like, why are you showing people pictures of my nuts? So that would make me uncomfortable. Well, it's because you did it, right? <laughs> Because we, we, have we, those, still, we still have no proof or a witness or anybody. For whatever reason, we could pick Denny's nuts out of a lineup. You know, we <laughs> had those disposable cameras all around the house for, you know, anytime we had parties or we're going somewhere and it never failed. You get them developed and you're like looking through them like, oh, that's a cute photo. That's a cute one. Then you like rotate around like, oh, damn it, Denny. That's some gum. Looks like some chewed yeah. up gum. That, that was on you. I never, I never took the photo. You did. I just would show everybody of your artwork. This was awesome. And it's it's like my butthole, right? <laughs> like they, I don't even think they'll develop stuff like that anymore. Like I don't think they'll, you know what I mean? If you if you turn I mean, that into Walgreens, nuts, though, it's, it'd be hard for them to tell. They're like, oh, was that a, was that a, what is that? <laughs> Jody did that at my wedding. I remember that I remember too. That. that was horrible. He yeah. did what? What did he do? He, he pulled his nuts out in the yeah. wedding photo, dog, and then took photos around the different of his like, nuts. Yeah, throughout the wedding. Oh, he's trying to be like me. Mm, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Allegedly, we're still not sure if it was me that did that. I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I knew it's Jody doing it. Yeah. But you know, he also took pictures on every one of the the cameras of his nuts at Joey's wedding. So mm -hmm. that's like that's next level shit, dog. That is. It's like I mean, like you know what's so crazy is like. But that's Jody. It, look, at the time it happened, oh, like it's funny, and now like older, I'm like that's so disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Like the the older me is <laughs> like that's so disrespectful to do at somebody's wedding. You know, I mean, we're, but we're is. still young. I didn't care. I mean, they were just cheap cameras. You're like, oh, there's another uh, red hair. Throw that one out. Dude, that <laughs> wedding. It was the coldest. The coldest freaking day ever. It was like you a, decide it was, to get married in February. Okay, so to be fair, my wife looked at the, the farmer's, farmer's almanac. almanac. Yeah, we heard this story. <laughs> and, the, yes. and the week before and the week <laughs> after, like all of them were supposed to be in the 60s, which they were. Except for that weekend. Except that weekend. And it was literally like a Green Bay Packer game. It not, was so not to be dramatic, cold. but it was like I remember giving it was my a vows. Beautiful wedding, but it was so cold. And then so they remember it was supposed to be in that oak garden beside the yeah. pavilion. And then they had to shift everything to that huge pavilion. And they had those drapes that would come down. But the rafters where the wind was blowing through, it would go down. And then we had to get those uh those heating trees and those torpedoes. Yeah. And both of my grandparents burnt their pantyhose because they were getting it too close to those heaters. <laughs> Wait, your grandfather was wearing pants? My grandparents, my grandma, sorry. Oh, uh, okay, grandmothers, okay. So my grandmothers, uh, also, like the bartenders left because it was so cold. They're they like, they left. Us enough money. So I started looking around and I'm like, why is everybody carrying bottles of wine? I'm like, oh shit, the bartenders are gone. Yeah. It was cold. It was hey, fun. But, you know, but you know what? Y'all are still married. We are. Yeah, I can. My, yeah. my wedding was perfect and we're divorced, so, you know. You start formulating your your guest list, and then yeah. especially at that time, we talk about you know your friends or you know you have some family, and then your friends are real influential, and you're like you want to try and invite everybody. Yeah, and you start going through this list, and like we invited, like I think it was like 400 people. As cold as it was, like 300 still showed up. <laughs> it was a lot. Was it that big? God, I can't even, like, jeez. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, do you do you want to say something that makes you that makes you uncomfortable about me and Din? Um, I can say both y'all because I think both y'all kind of fall suit in this. Is okay. that 
you're like, you're not that structured. Like I am very structured in the things that I do. And I remember like living with y'all, y'all, y'all were not structured at all. It would stress me out. Like it would be like, if we're paying bills, like as soon as, you know, rent was due, I was like writing my check a couple of days before and giving it to Scott. And then like, y'all were like, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll take care of it whenever. And, um, so anyway, that's just something that, you know, if we're finding holes in people, that's, you know, that's very interesting. Like, cause it's, it's way different today. Right. No. And that's so, so but my concept of time with that was when we we're in college, no, which no, yeah, yeah. everybody's developing and trying to figure yeah. things out. But I, I've always been very structured and that's I just still how take it, risk. Yeah. I still take oh, risk. I, and I'm risk avert. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. You're probably in index funds and, and <laughs> very safe money and stuff like that. And, and, and I am too. Right. But because part of me, but like, but it's still very structured. All my shit comes out bills and everything come out on time. I'll, you know, I, my kids savings for their future goes out on time. And, you know, it's very, very structured in that, that standpoint. But I very much like when I go on vacation, like I hate cruises mm-hmm. and I cannot, I don't, I can't stand it. Cause it's so structured. Yeah. And you probably love them. Don't you? No, I don't like cruises. Either. You don't like cruises. No. Well, but why? The reason I don't like cruises is I don't like being captive on something. Like oh, if, yeah. if I want to go that's, somewhere, that's me too. I don't like, I want to fly and I will spend time there. Yes. Uh, I want to like really enjoy it. Not do all the little touristy stuff. Do you make a list? Like a, like a time. Cause I no. can see you like, uh, you know, the, 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 I can see Joey making like, all right, we're going to go do this at like 10 in the morning. And then we're going to do that for two hours. And then we're going to go do this. So, yes. I can see him doing that. Not that extent. Yeah, but okay, yes, yeah, so right. like I have to know what's going on at all times. Okay. But that, kinda, you know, but that's just how I operate. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that can, and I, so from that standpoint, I am still very unstructured when I go on vacations. Like I'll book shit just last minute, mm-hmm. which sometimes I pay more, sometimes I pay less. Right. I'll buy tickets to games last minute. Um, and I, I kind of feel like it makes it exciting, right? I don't know. Which, you know, more stressful. Some people say but, stressful, exciting. What's the difference? Dopamine go up. But down, I, go. but I marry somebody that's just like that. That is not structured. So like when we're going on trips somewhere, she's like, all right, I booked an Airbnb. We'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah. yeah. And it, but it's fun. But it's it's taking me out of my comfort zone. Sometimes it's not a that's not a that's not a bad thing though. Mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. And that's why that mix comes in because Barb is. She can be where she wants structure, mm-hmm. you know. So, all right, we're gonna do this one real quickly, and then we're gonna move on to a different structure. This this is not really a tough oh, question. So you get to avoid the question about us. Oh no, did I not answer it? Wait, did he? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> let me think real quick. So you wanted to avoid this? Yeah. No, I, I don't, I'm not. I'm, I just didn't. I just didn't really think about. I'm just kidding. It. Uh, when it comes to Joey, it's like you know. This was like our like you know fifteenth fifteenth attempt to book this podcast you know to get him to come and I I just I would like to know that like hey if I if we say we're gonna do something let's just fucking like do it because we don't have a lot of time you know mm-hmm. what I mean and like I'm so grateful and appreciative that you're here finally but I wish it would just been like oh we just could have done it and it was like done you know it didn't take so long and so but I understand that people have priorities and things like that but like. If that's something I wanted out of our relationship, that would be it. Mm. Did I just call you fat? Is that what I just did? That just no, that was earlier, but I kind of felt it. I felt it. Um, well, I'm kind of glad I did lots of this because I wouldn't have the chance to be here. So, so it's it all full circle. Yeah, full circle. Do you know? Do Do you know? So thank you, Joey, for delaying his podcast for you're as long welcome. as you did. Kenny, do, I do appreciate you know, it. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is This is going to sound fucked up. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, you know, Mixed like tape therapy. Well, I, I love you, dude, and um, I want you to take care of yourself because I don't, I don't want to really bury my friends, and so whatever that means for you to be the healthiest version of yourself, I want you to do that because I don't want to lose you as a friend. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, like you know. And with saying that, whatever I can do to help and facilitate that, whatever you need from me, like I am here to help because if it's something that I want, selfishly, I want, you know, if we're talking about like, you know, our relationship, then I should be willing to help, you know? I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, But if you're going to be running and talk to Joey, I ain't doing that shit. 
<laughs> I do. I absolutely run. I just don't run 50 miles. Okay, really quickly. Most I can do these days with my dog. We do it together. It's seven. But then this foot just starts going crazy on me. Like, yeah. And then, and then I'll probably be down for a couple of days if I don't. If I, it's just that joint right there. I need to get it replaced. Like, I need to get surgery on it. But I'm afraid because it's the doctor make it worse. Yeah. He's like, there's a chance. I'm a good surgeon, but there's a chance you could have a drop foot after that. And that means, Ooh. that means there's no more running. Mm-hmm. There's barely walking. Barely walking. <laughs> so I'll just deal with it. Yeah. Run three and a half miles. That's still good. Be good. So I just need to do more consistent on that. Okay. Really quickly. All right. What is something that we all used to do together that you wish we still did? I'll go first. Uh, tubing. That's my, that's my. <sighs> what, what do you, what do you wish we still did together? Go to the square. Oh, you know, I did love the square. I, yes, but more of like the impromptu being able just to go do something real fast. Like, cause we're all together. Like, Hey, let's go grab some real quick. Yeah. Let's go grab some meat real quick. Let's go grab a few drinks. Yeah. I think for me, like kind of, kind of go back to you earlier. is like the family part of it. Like we were all huddled up in a living room together, being brothers and, and doing stuff, you know, it's like, I have that with my family now, mm-hmm. but sometimes we need that male bonding part of it. Like the, the, to go do things together as a family. And, and that's what I really miss about, you know, why we can't, things that I wish we could do more often, you know, play Mario party and drink Captain Morgan spice rum. Yeah. And, um, and Coca-Cola. Okay. Um, uh, Joey, it's your turn. Let's save reflection for last. Okay. Right. Okay. So you have the good and the bad. Which one would you like to choose? Let's go the good. All right. Give us a break from me being a dick. What is one difference between us that you like? And you can talk about me or Denny. A difference between us. Like something difference between us, but that you like about me. Maybe that you were not, maybe. Um, not Denny, I'll go with you first. Um, he don't like none about it. <laughs> you know, like about you, like you just, you didn't give a damn. Like you wanted just to have fun and you didn't care how you're going to have fun, but you know, you're going to have fun. You always had a smile on your face. And so that is something that I, you know, really appreciate in you. Yeah. That's something that's, that hasn't changed either. Like I, <laughs> I, I feel like we, I, I I want to be positive. I want to be around positive people, and life's too short to walk around with this cloud above you. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying you have to always be positive because I've had bad days too, right? Bad times, but I just li- like to live positively. Yeah, it's, it's it makes things so much better. You know, yeah. And I always see the best in people. I try to, mm-hmm. and then that could be. Sometimes, you know, that could be really bad because people could take advantage of you. Yeah. And so I've kind of been a little jaded on that standpoint, but I still, you know, I still try to give people the benefit of the doubt and then just try to be positive about stuff. So, yeah. Um, Scott, with you, and it's been a couple of things, you know, a couple of themes that I've said tonight about you, and it's like your creativity. Um, I was going through, because it, it seems like my wife and I, like we move all the time. And um, I remember when we moved from Corpus to Houston, I was going through some stuff and I found those portraits that you took of me and Taylor, remember? Mm-hmm. And it was like I was in my judo gi and Melvin was the boxer. Oh, yeah. But it was like the things that you would think about and and how to capture them, whether it was like in a painting or um, in a drawing or, you know, in photography. It's like you just have this very much creative side of you that like I never have. Like, I mean, I think I'm creative to a degree, but not like you. So that's something that I really liked out of you. Thank you. It's your turn, dog. To answer? To answer about y'all? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just make sure. Um, I I mean, it, this, mm, 
this is an example of it, but it's it's much bigger than this. Uh, Joey, I, I appreciate your dedication to whatever you're doing. So whatever you put your mind to, um, you're really dedicated to that thing and executing it at a high level. Um, and that is not something that people do very easily. Um, so, you know, that's great. Um, it, you know, it, to, to call to Din, like, I mean, you, you definitely 100% are a positive person, but sometimes it's not even the positive person. It's the positive spin that you put on shit. And sometimes in a moment where stuff is kind of shit, like to have somebody just goes like, Hey guys, this ain't like, ain't that bad. Or like, you know, like what, what could we do with something worse or whatever it is, is kind of what you need to get through that moment. And like, I really appreciate that because like not very many people can do that. And, um, not many people do that. Like people don't like just try to go, okay, what positive can I really pull out of this? And so, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Like it's, it's something I've had to, um, work on in my life just because as, as a youngster, I've, you know, I had a pretty rough upbringing and I always try to pull out something positive out of everything I do. Right. Even whether it be negative or positive, uh, just to, to find that glimmer of hope that you could say it could be the shittiest situation in the world. We just got bombed by, you know, whomever and our house is on fire. Um, well, Hey, we now we get a chance to move to somewhere different, you know? Um, I don't know. It's an extreme example, but I just try to, I try to look at a way that you can invest in yourself and grow. And I think everybody could benefit by doing that, you know, not always focusing on the negative. Um, on the flip side, some people might see as in, is this genuine, you know, they, they say, well, this guy full of shit, you know, but I don't know. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, and I get that, but for me, I think it's part of partly a defensive mechanism too. Right. So, um, <clears throat> for Scott, um, Hmm. I think the differences between you and I is that, um, so you you have a knack about being able to just tell people I don't give a fuck. Um, no matter what, I don't care if you're gonna be my friend or not. Just fuck you, and I'm gonna do what I want, and I'm gonna be who I'm gonna be. And sometimes that's hard for me to do, right? And I really appreciate that about you, like that that you're gonna be your most genuine self. And I think a lot of people could learn from that just to open up and say, this is who I am, accept me or don't. Right. Well, it's kind of like, this is who I am. I don't like, I don't need acceptance. You yeah. just, you just have to, because, but I think the, the, the thing of that is like, people go, okay, like I'm just going to be who I am. And then they're like, you have to accept me. And I'm like, no, I don't like, you know and I mean, like, I don't have to be, part of whatever you're doing you know what i mean like you have to be comfortable with whatever you're doing yeah you know and i think that that's the the miss there sometimes yeah. you know what i mean like like as long as i'm not hurting you and i'm not hurting anybody else why do you give a shit yeah exactly you know and then what? for you for you joey um g going back to um you know how you were talking about how structured you are one of the things that really just impressed me is like when you when you talked about that you graduated from college and you got, you paid off all your student loans or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, like I'm a finance major. And I couldn't figure that out. Like, and I'm still working and I'm doing all and like that. That's one of the things that really impressed me. And, and, and now that I'm older, I feel like I've gotten a better grip of that. But then I didn't have no clue. I was like, Holy shit. How this kid do that? I was very impressed by that. And so that was one of the difference because I struggled with money in college mightily. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I wasn't making money. Just didn't know how to manage it. Easy come, easy go. Exactly. Because I always like to have fun. I, I, I've always had this fear and it, and it was growing up. Like I was just afraid I was going to run out of money. So it yeah. was, and so I always tucked away money 
you know, yeah. waiting tables because it was like, you know, we all worked through college and I worked mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, if I wasn't in school, it was working. And then after work, I go party. I was always just afraid of money. Like, and even to this day, um, like I always worry, like, I'm not going to have enough money for retirement. I'm not, I'm not going to have enough money in case if we have this or that. So it's like, so at what point do you stop worrying? And as I progress in my career, obviously, you know, when I first got out of college, I was making a little bit, then you make a little bit more to where I'm at now. I make a lot more now than I did when I first got out of college, but it's still, you know, what's, what's enough. What's enough. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the bad, and then we have a we're gonna have a special ending for the show. So, but I'm gonna do these Happy rapid ending. fire. If someone has a quick story, then you just go. You're like, doo -doo -doo -doo, you just go ahead and you go. We're gonna go through these rapid fire. Okay, has there ever been a time that one of us has made enough another one feel embarrassed? Uh, yeah, I'll go. Okay, go. Um, Denny, <laughs> <laughs> there. <do>, uh, <laughs> Remember that time that uh, the girl, I don't think you're dating her. You were just kind of hanging out with her. And um, I told you that she saw more dicks in a urinal. And then you told her that. And then I was at a party like two weeks later. I'm like, oh, hey, so-and-so, what's going on? She's like, more dicks in a urinal, huh? And walk off. And oh. everybody's staring at me. I'm like, oh. Jenny, you're not supposed to tell the people that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, I can, I can either confirm or deny that I said, that I told her that. Maybe she overheard you, but clearly I did. But that's 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 funny. Actually. <laughs> All right. Um, for everyone in the room, is there something that another person in this room needs to let go of? I'll go. <laughs> Scott, you need to let go of some shoes, buddy. That's fair. How many pairs of shoes are we talking, bro? That's it is a wall. He showed me earlier. Oh, this all over here? No, no, no. No, this is nothing. <laughs> You see his Taj Mahal upstairs of, of shoes. That's you don't have anything to collect? Uh, yeah, I do, but not in what, what excess. Do you, what do you collect? Yeah, what do you collect? Um, I'm interested now. I, I like guns. Oh, what do you got? Uh, a couple guns. Oh, you don't want to. I got you. Just a, um, <laughs> I, got you. I, uh, I collect. Oh, 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 Jason, oh, Jason Lynn's like, yeah, yeah, don't, don't talk about this shit. <laughs> Oh, uh, then then you, you, you need to meet my buddy Jason Lynn. No man, I got my my little brother is even worse than I am. All right, yeah. hey, well, look, okay. oh yeah, I've talked to him about it. Yeah. All right. This is for anybody in the room. Describe a time I made you anxious. Maybe anxious. I mean, I feel like I. I Bro, that's I, a dumb question. Go to the next one. No, no, hang on, really quickly. I feel like. You know, when when Joey was talking about like, you know, Denny just lives like carefree and just like, you know, whatever. I definitely feel like there was times in college where like Denny would take me to a party and I'd be like, fuck, man, I don't know if we should be here. Like this feels kind of <laughs> sketch or whatever. And he's like, no, come on. It's fine. <laughs> oh, so that was your question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, well, like that's the time I felt anxious. You know, what oh, I, mean? I get in where I fit in. So I could I could I mean, I still do that stay. I don't I think I've never met a stranger. And uh, my yeah. mom even would tell me stories when I was a kid. Like I would, I would just go up to people and be like, "What up? You will, know, you, like, will you be my friend?" Yeah, I just talk to anybody, and that's just kind of who I am. That's kind of why I'm in sales and good at it, right? Is it's uh, when I meet somebody, I can talk to them, and I have a I like I try to have a genuine connection with them. It doesn't always come down that way, but like, yeah. So I can see that going to a party, and you're like. What the, where are we at? Man? Well, and definitely, I mean, like, even if I put off some air of confidence, it was def I was definitely not feeling that inside. So, like, we get at a party and be like, oh, man, like, I don't know how I fit in at this place. And Dave's just like, come on. I like, I'm definitely, like, definitely 100% going to like other fraternity parties. And I'm like, hey, like, Dan, like, are we even supposed to be here? Like, is this cool that we're here at somebody else's fraternity? He's like, no, nah, it's fine. I know such and such. And I was like, well, I don't know any of these dudes. Yeah. Um, I remember a time I was I, I was working at Grist Mill at the time. And then I went over to, um, you're working at Johnny Carino's. Mm -hmm. Right? And Both of us did. Yeah. And um, and I remember I went, I, I came over there. You're like, hey, why don't you come over to the bar and have a few drinks after work? So I did. I'm sitting there talking with you and you introduced me to the girl that worked there and you're like oh hey we're engaged i'm like no you're not and he's like no yeah we're engaged and you only knew her for a short time frame like my anxiety went to a 10 do you remember which that? is which is, i don't i well that totally sounds i mean stacy 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that definitely happened, probably, right? But, I mean, I was never aware that your anxiety was a 10, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, why would you Why would you be, like, you wouldn't be happy for him? You just thought maybe he was making a mistake. I thought that was a fucking dumb, dumb, a, a dumb decision. I, I mean, he wasn't well, wrong. I mean, yeah, I mean, looking and back. You, but... you, you're looking at for your friends, and I'm just like, how? And like he he showed he showed me the ring. They were all both excited. I'm like, oh my god, I don't I don't, I don't even know what to say. And yeah. I mean, I, after a while, I was like more supportive of it. But at the time, it was like a shock because I didn't even hardly meet her. And then next thing you know, you're telling me you're engaged. Yeah, what was your decision making process there, bro? Mm, not good. Mm. Like but you're hey, just, but you're hey, just but anxious I, to go to the next one. Or? I, I think I took you didn't want to lose, lose. Like I don't know who, I don't know when I dated her, when, who, or before. I don't know where I was at that point. I mean, obviously, I was not in a solid state of mind. Okay. Um, but I also remember, uh, I, I think I've told the story before. I remember a time that we went to like Austin and uh, she bought me like a video game and then we got in a fight on the way home. But I was like, man, I really want to play that game. <laughs> and so I kept everything like kosher enough to get the game. And then I started fighting so that she would kick me out. And then I went home to play the game. Nice. Is that where we got Tony Hawk? No, it was like some Super Nintendo game. It was like some sort of football game. So or you something. intentionally got in a fight with her? Just like, no, no, no. We got in a fight <laughs> on the way genius, home. Actually. But I, I, intentionally, keep I intentionally like tried to keep it calm enough to get the video game. And then once I got the game, then I fired up the fight so that she would kick me out so that I could go play. But I had the game. But you, I, that's what I'm saying. You intentionally fired up the fight so she would send you home. Yeah, but like I kept the fight at, at like at bay. Like I try not to argue. Just to make sure he has the prize. Yeah, yeah. Now that he has the prize, I don't care anymore. It's my prize. Like, I'm not saying these are most my most shining moments as a person. I wonder if that would work these days. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so this just is joking. perfect. This is like this is this is the last one. Kind of in this. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, uh, if there's one thing you could change about me, what would it be, Joey? It would be exactly that. I just wouldn't want you to worry about me like so much and be you know. So like, you know, when you're talking about like Din and like, just like that anxiousness, I just wouldn't want you to have that for us. Like, we don't, we don't care. I'm sorry. I bothers you. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think I changed anything about you guys. I like, I like, I, and that sounds like a cop out, but I think like I mean, you, guys are, is. you guys, you guys, no, you guys are who you well, are. I'm not coming me. from a shitty place. I'd like as a, as yeah. his friend, I don't want him to feel that way. I don't want him to, yeah. no, no, I don't want him to be on 10 because of some dumb decision I made. Well, that was one of many that dumb decisions. Dumb. Okay. Let's be fair. And it was for that short time frame, right? It's not like yeah. I have anxiety about it now. No, but no. at that time it's like, you know, it was a, like, where, where were you at with this emotion in this time of our, our relationship right and that was that time i think if i were going to change one thing is the distance between us like if we could live in the same neighborhood and and be neighbors y'all want to y'all want to move on my to my and hang out hang out together that'd be one thing i'd change Mm -hmm. you know that'd be kind of let's buy our own neighborhood yeah a little compound like communal living yeah grow some plants in the back and dig wells and have a fishing pond bro we don't have to do all that it's like those, a mo- those, we're in a modern fucking we're not amish we're in a modern fucking world we, we just want to live the same on a compound just, i'm gonna learn how to be self-sufficient honestly uh, danny's going straight uh Prepper. cult yeah no <laughs> hey like Yama, hey, Yama, hey, Yama. hey like hey like uh, hey we're this, not doing hot <laughs> yoga in the fucking third <laughs> hey like this, 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 is the, this is the way it like lays out right okay so you you go into our neighborhood and there's all these really nice houses and like we're all, all our kids are, like playing outside and the lawn is kept and then you get to the very end of the cul sac and there's this one house the yard isn't fucking mowed he's growing vegetables in the fucking backyard because like but like we're gonna like run out of resources and shit it's just Denny on the, the, on the clothes comp. made out of hemp <laughs> smoking like, and I then smell he's like, like y'all meat. gonna see one day all the resources are gonna be gone y'all be coming for my vegetables and y'all better buy some and hemp. I was like dude there's Sam's Club yeah and y'all no, better- he was just talking about I want like the best health for you the best health would be to grow your own your own food and to have clean water and to have I, I 100%. naturally grown food, <laughs> like 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 organic food that you go hunt for yourself. So you start like, finding solutions. Solution look, based. I one hundred percent agree with that. But yeah. let me let me make this statement. There is a big space between shitty eating and that. Oh, yeah, for sure. That you can make up a, a lot of fair ground. And, like, a lot of people, I feel like, get stuck around the idea of, like, oh, uh, well, I'm not eating organic, so I'm just going to die. Well, no, that's not like, you know, like, if you don't eat this certain way, 
you, you can still live a furry, healthy life. It might not be as healthy oh, as it yeah. was in the 50s because of the stuff that they put in food and yeah. the way that thing is. But, like, I mean, you're still going to live a long time. Just don't eat like shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, that's... I don't know how we got from there. No, you were just, you were just saying about our neighborhood with, like, overgrown crops in my yard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I must be like, hey, that, that's a crazy old ditty. Yeah. <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> And Bar and Barb's just yelling at kids out in the front yard. Yeah, that'd be funny, actually. That'd be. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, look, I, I live on a. I would live on a a a, a, a compound with y'all. Yeah, I'd have. I mean, I'd I mean, have. I mean, I'd have some distance. But, I mean, no offense. I'd I would have distance for all of us. We, I think we, that would, we need structure. Just it would be. Have, you, you, ever see, structure, yeah. you, you ever see the righteous gemstones and how they all live on that thing, but they're real far from each other? That's what it'd be like. You know, so I know you're there, but you're not like close enough that I can like see you nude. You know what I mean? If you like walk in front of your windows, I'm like, that looks like he's not wearing clothes, but I can't really. Oh, yeah, that is and big. then he turns and he turns around. And it's like a third baby leg, and I'm like, oh yeah, he's not wearing clothes. <laughs> so that, that is one thing I would say. Like I I fully embrace my body and its natural state. I'll just say that. Like it does not bother me to walk around. Then definitely this compound no needs to be on. big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would have to be big. Yeah. Are you you That's need a house with no windows? Like I don't care though. Like but I, I, care. I mean, if you care, so maybe <sighs> like put up shades in your house so you don't see. But like for me, like I don't care. Like <laughs> we were born naked, we're gonna die. Na- well, you know, we're gonna die. Some may die naked. May I will probably die naked. But... So is it naked or naked? Because there's a difference naked, between the two. Buck yeah. naked. No, it's I. I just don't care. It's we all have penises and Johnny's. <laughs> and who cares? You know. Hey, he, he said he sounds no like he sounds like my three year old.